still crawling forward. He's got all the members of 17 in front grenade. of him. He could take the shot. He could go for the grenade. He's got What's a he going to do? He's just sneaking up back behind it. Is this going to be the turning point? Can Captain come up big? It's going to land right no. on their feet. Oh, oh my God. God. Captain just destroyed 17 Gaming. Are you kidding me? Through different points, and you can see that it was Cloud9 going for the grenade that gets caught on the push out of it. And that's BB taking the shots back on one angle. It's going to be Insight getting spotted out as well. And look at that. That is going to be the Blue Bees walking away with 11 kills. Hey, everybody. It's Esports in 30, where we deep dive into your favorite esports. And today, the F in Friday stands for FPS, because we're talking about PUBG Global Summit. Also for Fry, because I'm AJ Fry. This is Zurich here with me on the couch. We're excited to chat PUBG for the first time on Esports in 30, uh, because unlike Forknife, I've actually logged about 1,000 hours into PUBG. You played as well. Oh, yeah. Like half as much as you have. And you're twice as good as me, so <laughs> that works out perfectly. Yeah, I think that's how it works. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, though. Uh, so what's your favorite loadout in PUBG? Um, definitely the Scar L. The Scar L, not fully the uh, M416, as no. everyone typically goes. Yeah, I like the. Uh, it feels like it's it's easier to shoot it. Okay. For me, so it's like for, to spray and um, delete spray people. Spray and pray. Yeah, it's, okay. it's a lot easier. And also the Car 98. Of just course. just to get rid of that long long range fight. Same boat. Car 98, six times scope on there. Mm -hmm. And then my secondary, though I did read an article where someone said, don't run this combo, <laughs> but screw that. I like what I like. And uh, my secondary gun is the Vector, which they just switched to 9mm ammo. Nice. Yeah. So a lot more ammo. Yes, I need to find, well, you get more of it. Yeah, and you spray more of it with that extended quick mag. All right, enough of us chatting uh, the nitty gritty. We got someone else coming up in just a bit. Before that, here are some highlights. Captain's still falling forward. He's got all the members of 17 in front grenade. of him. He could take the shot. He could go for the grenade. He's got What's he going to do? He's just sneaking up back behind it. Is this going to be the turning point? Can Captain come up big? It's going to land right no. on their feet. Oh, oh, my God. God. Captain just destroyed 17 Gaming. All that utility they could pick up off of the dead members of 17. He could make it rain here onto Waikikamuka. Waikikamuka oh. does get the first aid off that grenade. Just a little oh. too far, but he's so weak for him. Yet he good. He just misses the shot. He makes it into cover, but it doesn't matter. 4 a.m. Run away with that and get eight kills off of Captain's massive play. <laughs> he tries to free fire. Style doesn't bait. Style is being very patient here. He's waiting. He gets the back. AFF takes game number one. That's going to be Juicy Gout gone down. Now three left standing and off the long. Shocks absolutely tearing them limb from limb. What a play from this man. Where is your remainder? Oh, it doesn't oh matter. Incognito God. get deleted. How do they break back into this new circle? Shoot to kill. Oh, they've been caught out by Hotboyer. He's been solely working his way forward. That's two, That's two kills. He's oh, three. Oh, it's oh. a Cody Cody goes down. Try and find Hotboyer, but this man is an animal. He's found so many before. Can he do it again? Surely not six grenades. <gasps> no way. Hotboyer has just found Indigo in the nade. Came out of his hands. That's this guy is about to go off, surely not. He's found another kill. <laughs> That's crazy. He's coming back. Oh, my God. This is insanity for one player. Trying to use it to stranglehold, get more and more control, force BB to funnel through different points. And you can see that it was Cloud9 going for the grenade that gets caught on the push out of it. And that's BB taking the shots back on one angle. It's going to be Insight getting spotted out as well. And look at that. That is going to be the Blue Bees walking away with 11 kills. They always see feels like C900. They're driving C. That's a double tap straight to the brain. They're somehow managing to at least right the ship as it goes through. Yep, there is Rascal getting chased down here by Bob Oh, oh my goodness. Some nice shots with the Mini 14 there by Babo. There's tons of smokes coming out. 17 making a move. Here we go. Look at all the smoke that's down in play. And that beautiful grenade coming out from Abisa, getting that down on the two members. And Abisa is just absolutely on fire at this hilltop. He is just destroying 17. What did he get away with? Uh, how low? Double Was that head, two? Double headshot. Literally, ding, ding, thank you. Bye bye. There might be some other here where they literally just kill him. I think they might do Sharky. He can't do it. It's DG98. And I'm pretty sure the Rangers might have just pushed themselves. London, will you please put your hands together for your Global Summit champions, OP Gaming! That clutch nade from Captain may go down as one of the sickest plays in PUBG history. And today we're super thrilled to welcome the sickest PUBG guest. Nice segue to help us go over everything from Global Summit. It's Mustache Dave. What's up? 
Yo, what up, gentlemen? What up? Thanks for having me, Mustache Dave. Live from Miami. Live from Miami. <laughs> Live. It's got a great Live ring to Miami. it. Live from Miami. So you are certainly up on the PUBG scene. I've played a whole bunch. Uh, for the longest time, it was my favorite uh, Battle Royale game, although lately I've been getting into the Apex Legends. But PUBG has sustained Ooh. in spite of this overly saturated Battle Royale market. Why do you think it has the staying power? Apex Legends. I mean, I mean, PUBG. You can't just bind uh, your bunny hop to your scroll wheel. Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's got money. It's got the esports scene, and uh, it's just growing. I mean, we're going into phase two of the the phase of uh, the PUBG Global League. We just saw Face It happen about a week ago. Uh, those numbers were phenomenal, especially the Chinese numbers from our understanding. They were turned on the stream and 500,000 people automatically watching it. You heard the crowd. You mentioned the captain play. The crowd was cheering for him. I mean, that was uh, probably the highlight of that tournament for sure. Mm. Around 400,000 views on the Reddit post for that play alone. So uh, it's just attracting people. I mean, people might have dropped the game for a little bit, right? They, they forgot about it. But with all these updates, they're coming back, baby. They're coming back. Mm. Well, do you think the uh, the mobile market is even feeding into that a little bit? Because I know on, on our show a couple of weeks back, we were talking about the launch of a mobile esports tournament as well. Yeah. Do you think mobile's feeding into it? Uh, I mean, they're separate, right? They're different companies. I guess kind of the same game. But uh, the mobile, they just announced they have like a cup going. They have a roadmap for the next two years with around $2.5 million in prize pools. So. Uh, mobile's big, mobile's big, and it's free, so anybody can play it. So mm. maybe if you play mobile, you might want to try out the PC version, but in my opinion, completely separate games. I mean, mobile, you got like a zombie game mode and uh, all these skins on the vehicles, which we see kind of implemented in the PC version as far as skins go, maybe some inspiration, but uh, completely different games, completely different games, in my opinion. Okay, so for those uh, for the people who are kind of new to um, watching BR, can you explain to us, break us down, break it down, how the point system for specifically this Face It tournament worked out? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, before Face It and uh, the Global League kind of started this this year, uh, the points were all everywhere, right? Different tournaments, different cups had their own point structures, and it got to a point where. Uh, the average viewer was just super confused and lost. Uh, and, and they voiced their opinions, the pro players voiced their opinions, and we came on this universal rule set. So pretty much, uh, I believe top eight, they get awarded points. First place is like 10 points, it goes down from there. Each kill is worth one point, and all the leagues worldwide use the same point structure, the same circle settings, the same uh, ammo loop settings as far as we even have hard spawns for vehicles in esports oh. mode so it's all universal now everybody's playing on the the same playing field and uh, are able to practice on the same rules and the viewers in my opinion are able to keep up and keep up to date with this because uh like we mentioned everybody's using the same rules now same points and uh that's that yeah uh, that's that's very important a bit of consistency because I remember playing around you know when the game first came out going like this is so random yeah you know, I drop in the city one time and I get two AKs right at the get go and then mm -hmm. drop in the same building the next game I'm like oh great I got my little you know handgun no. yeah and even the vehicles like being yeah. in a specific spot all the time like teams can actually plan to just land get that and, one yeah get so I see I see teams like one guy is always just like off somewhere grabbing a vehicle and everybody right. else yeah. is looting and then they all converge back with their ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's uh, talk about uh, the team that uh, came out of the pack on uh, on the top. First place, OP Gaming Rangers. They uh, sustained throughout the uh, the tournament, uh, staying in the top 10. Um, they had that early 13 kill round in round three. What makes this team, uh, team so good and why are they so fun to watch? Uh, well, two players in particular stick out to me, and that's DG98 and uh, Mutual, all right? Now, if you go into the stats, you look at their stats, both those players, uh, let's see real quick, DG98 was number four as far as most kills, and Mutual was number six, and that's out of 64 players. And if you go on to longest survive times, like who survives the longest, they hold the first and second spot. So in my mind, uh, if they have a rough game, I'm looking at the scores real quick. Uh, 
you know, they go out in fifth place, third place, something like that. They might lose some members early on. They have these two guys that are dedicated to trying to survive and get those placement points and, uh, you know, transition into the circles as safely as possible without being spotted. So we see that with the stats and we see that with their consistent scores in the 12 games that they did play to, uh, you know, take home the victory there. Mm. Wow, that's that's very impressive. I think that's that's nuts. I think um, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's move on to Team Liquid, who uh, made it third. The um, they're identical twins, I think, Samdi and Jumpy. Uh, is there any? Do you think there's some sort of like brotherly synergy? I know I play a lot with my brother, and sometimes we You're don't have really. Yeah, cool. and we don't have to talk sometimes. You know, do you think <laughs> this is the case for these two? Uh, they also got second place in phase one of PEL. Uh, that's the PUBG Europe League. So consistent team, in my opinion. At first, when they first started playing together, there there was some growing pains, and I'm sure a lot of them, uh, a lot of the community could agree with me on that one. But over time, I believe they have been able to improve their communication skills. Not only that, they picked up a coach, 17, who is a uh, previous professional PUBG player for NA. And um, since then, in my opinion, along with the coach, they have been doing a great job. And, you know, I, I work PEL, I'm a stage interviewer, so I get to see like the behind the scenes type of thing. And Team Liquid, the only team after every single game, they wait at their computers for their coach to come and they break down the whole entire game. All the other teams, they're eating chips, they're eating hot dogs, they're, they're taking their break, they're watching the VODs, but the mm. discipline, because I believe 17 used to be in the military, so he's kind of using that military discipline um, to train his his team he does that so after every game they go over the VODs um, I believe he doesn't allow them to use their phones after every game kind of to avoid being tilted and, and you know reading Twitter and all that stuff so they are extremely focused right now and you know I wouldn't be surprised if they take first place here in phase number two of PEL coming up that's uh, it's cool he brought up coaching because I often host the show. Well, I always host the show on Tuesdays with mm -hmm. uh, Ron, who is a, an Overwatch team coach, and we talk about the importance of coaches involved in that sport. But I hadn't really considered coaching for PUBG. Is this something you would recommend to other teams? And we were mentioning the other guys just go after the game and you know just start partying. How critical <laughs> is a coach to succeeding in a, in a battle royale type environment? Uh, all, right, all right, they don't go off partying. They don't, they don't go off partying, but uh, That's what they you definitely. Said. You said they <laughs> go off okay. partying. That was a direct quote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do like pick up their phones. You see them scrolling through Twitter, all that Instagram, yeah. and uh, you know this is in the middle of uh, a season, I guess you can say. So say you have a bad game, you turn to your phone to kind of relieve that pressure. You could also get tilted because I know when I watch vods on Twitch. There's some comments there, you know, you can get tilted pretty easily and that mindset going into the next game is just something that you don't want to have. So there's a couple different coaches right now. There's an analyst coach that breaks down the plays, the circles, and then there's a mental coach that kind of just, you know, keeps the team focused. Um, some teams, they do not have coaches, but they are actively seeking coaches. And not only that, uh, Coaches, I believe, they get a ticket, they get a hotel voucher with the Pro League, so they, they get paid for. Um, there's no reason not to be a coach because it's not like you're coming out of your own pocket. Um, so I definitely feel like coaching is important. Uh, PUBG Esports, it's still fairly new, so it might not be a common practice for a lot of these teams, but as we progress within the scene, I think every team will have a coach coming up in uh, the end of this year for sure. Mm. Well, maybe Captain will move on to coaching uh, after that amazing 4K squad wipe against 17 Gaming. Uh, you mentioned it off the top, but we got to talk more about it. How excited were you when that play happened? Uh, I mean, the Caster did a phenomenal job uh, building up the hype. Captain was crawling on the ground. The crowd, they were uh, holding their breath. He cooked the grenade so perfect, and it just, uh, bloop, right on top of 17 Gaming, the crowd went crazy a lot of 4am fans over there and then not only that he had an interview at the end of um, the game i don't know if you guys recall he had some nice gold aviators on he was just chilling he was so calm in that interview <laughs> he was straight chilling and i was like man this guy he's on another level um <laughs> if you haven't seen his interview i'd recommend go watch it because uh, that's probably the best interview i've ever seen mm. i mean given that PUBG is fighting for so many eyeballs right now because i mean sorry for eyeballs right now because there's so many VRs, how much of a difference can a huge, potentially iconic play like this uh, make in grabbing people's attention again? Yeah, I mean, like we mentioned, it went on front page of Reddit, everybody was talking about that day, and even a week later, uh, around 400,000 views on that clip alone. So 
With PUBG, it's ultra realistic. I believe that's the category it's in, a realistic VR. Uh, a lot of people are into that kind of art style. And, um, you know, with the improvements, with the patches that, that they keep coming out, um, they, they keep bringing you back in. Like uh, a patch just got released a couple days ago where you can uh, level up your guns. You can mastery your guns. You get little trinkets, little keychains for your guns. Uh, it, it's these small touches that, uh, I believe keeps people coming back to PUBG, to play PUBG, to grind PUBG, and only, and now if we can kind of introduce that esports, that casual player, I believe the esports side will also grow alongside the, the game itself. Mm. Yeah, I mentioned Apex Legends earlier, and it, it is fun, but there's nothing in any game as satisfying as landing like a 400 meter car 98 headshot in PUBG. There's mm. just, just a sound. instant gratification at that moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to the tournament, uh, Shoot to Kill, they came in second place, became immediately sponsored by Lazarus. Why are Shoot to Kill a uh, one to watch out for? What's the strength of their roster? And uh, will they fare better with this shiny new sponsor in Lazarus? Uh, uh, hold on, let's say I, I play Apex, I play Fortnite, I play PUBG, all right? I play them all. So I'm yeah. not uh, really biased when it comes to that, <laughs> just to go back to that. Um, but Shoot to Kill, yeah, I believe they got fourth place in their league for the NPL, phase number one, so they were pretty good right there. And then, uh, what was it, second place for the Face It Global. Um, if they would have got four more points in that last game, they would have tied with the OP Rangers. And since they had one more kill, they would have won the game, actually. Uh, when it comes to uh, the deciding factor for tiebreakers. But I I'm happy for him, Lazarus, picking him up. It's the same team, Purdy Curdy, Uncivil, Adam, and Alo. with, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Adam, his brother, I, I believe is also his twin brother, Adam Dids, uh, is the coach. So there's some synergy with that. And um, every event, he, he comes looking how to fly, wearing suits. I mean, he takes his job super serious. And uh, they just have a good support system behind them in my opinion. So I think it's gonna be a roster that we're gonna see just continue to improve throughout the uh, the days that they continue playing here, especially with MPL coming up, I believe uh, May 5th. So uh, uh, keep your eye on that. Will do. Yeah. Um, well, with so many, uh, the, PUBG is one of those scenes where just it just has so many international teams. There's yeah. so many different teams from different regions. Um, watching this tournament, did you see any differences in play styles between the regions? I mean, it kind of goes back to what we mentioned earlier on um, as far as the same types of rule sets and settings that everybody plays on because uh, a couple of months ago, right, different regions were playing third person, first person. So there's there's a big controversy over that, over the settings. But since they introduced these uh, universal rule sets, everybody's on the same type of playing field, right? Um, so with that being said, I believe the only challenges when it comes to these global events is deciding where you want to drop as we saw in the the face it there there's a couple teams dropping a pachinki they're fighting each other non-stop so it's really do you want to continue dropping in that spot and risk getting taken out in 15th 16th and you know jeopardizing your tournament because there's only 12 games in the finals there's only 12 games so mm. two three three bad games there going out early uh like we said, shoot to kill, they're four points behind first place. It's gonna hurt you. So these teams, when it comes to international levels, I feel like they learn something new and that's to come to these events with a backup plan, you know, have uh, a different drop location. So, you know, if you get contested, you got somewhere else you go and, and you feel confident in yourself. We well, you used a word I wanna touch on right there, event. Um, it seems like compared to some of these other esports, BRs are something special when you go see them live. I've been to lots of other esports, and it's usually you know one team versus another in the match. Mm -hmm. The match mm -hmm. ends. That's the winner. That's the loser. But when we're watching battle royale, it's so many teams facing off against one another and in live, one game, right beside each other. Exactly. So, what is that experience like of being there watching BR live? Uh, yeah, because you got like 16 different teams, right? So, uh, you know, I believe right now we're, we're in the point where these rivalries are starting to happen. And, and I'm gonna bring it up again, face it. We saw Pachinki, Liquid, and Cloud9. Even 17, 17 they were there as well. But Liquid and Cloud9 building up to this event, uh, the hype, the rivalry behind who's gonna drop in Pachinki and win Pachinki was super big. We even saw on Twitter the players going back at it with each other, uh, people retweeting it, people tagging on board like, hey, Cloud9's gonna win, easy. Liquid, you better shoot away. Uh, <laughs> I spoke to some of the Liquid players, they're like, listen, we're gonna drop Pachinki all day long. Um, so 
that rivalry was not only in game but out of game and it allowed kind of the fans to bandwagon on top of that and get behind which side they want to cheer for. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's good. You know, fans have options on who to cheer for and there's 16 different options. So uh, you're bound to be cheering for at least one team for sure. Uh, with all of that, everything that we, we've been talking about so far, where do you see PUBG going into 2019? What is the future of the eSport? Well, I mean, like we mentioned, uh, it's kind of separate, but PUBG Mobile, they got that two-year roadmap. They got $2.5 million behind them, so they're going to be good with their events. And then uh, there's a roadmap also for the competitive side of PUBG on PC. They're going to be fine as well, in my opinion. Uh, it's just growing. I mean, every stream that they turn on, there, there's more viewers every time. These global events, they keep one-upping each other, uh, increasing their production levels as far as the uh, AI goes, the stats, the live trackers go. Uh, gifting of skins during the actual stream so that mm. interaction very important and each organizer in my opinion is learning from the last one and improving on that to increase that uh, that viewer experience and at the end of the day that's what's important because uh, we need to get those casuals that play the game over to the esports side of things and uh, mm. get them involved well we're uh, so glad that you were involved with our show today mustache Dave thanks for joining us yeah, I know it's talking fast. I just had to express though, but uh, report live from Miami. Mustache Dave. Thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> you know, Zarek, looking at Mustache Dave, I have to wonder if PUBG will ever add a Mustache Dave custom skin to the game. I hope so. Yeah. I really hope so. I wouldn't be surprised. I think some people would be excited by that. All right, it is FPS Friday, which means we got to close out with a survey of ridiculous amount of the ridiculous amount of news from the FPS world and various games. You ready for this, Zarek? I'm ready. All right, well, hit me up with some COD stats because uh, we're heading into Call of Duty World League. It's coming up uh, this coming weekend. Uh, and there was a whole merger between Accelerate and Red Reserve, like selling off players. What's going on here, Zarek? There's a lot of just roster moves. There's, okay. It's the innate natural COD. Yeah. There's always just nobody is ever set into stone. Like no one is playing in the same team. There are a right. few teams that are probably going to be consistent, namely like LG, your optics. Yeah. Um, hopefully they're going to take this tournament, but everybody else up in the air. Up we don't know air. what's going to happen. We yeah. don't know who's going to win. Some some days, again, in COD fashion, sometimes some people, I mean, some teams are just like on fire that one day, and then the next day they're absolutely getting pooped on. Right. So we really don't know. Don't bet. In, in COD at all because it's, oh. it's just super random. I, I gotta super make random. a call right now. But I gotta, <laughs> cancel all I gotta cancel all my bets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we look at uh, who we're looking out uh, for on phase? We got Scrap Zero, Zuma, Celium, and ASIM, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of like a combo of their, their B team and yep, uh, some members black. of Red Reserve. And then Elevate is running uh, Profizi, Whaler, Skies, Breezy, and M. Ruiz, uh, which is Accelerate and uh, Denial. And then Denial is now running Brack, Alex, Bance, Rated, and Joe, uh, which is the majority of Red Reserve and then some other players. Mm -hmm. uh, now what's cool about this upcoming uh, tournament though is that they actually offer a non-pro player stream, right? Yeah, so there's uh, well, a tournament, so there's an open, an open bracket tournament where anyone like me and you can join. But we could. We'll, yeah, but we'll probably get I demolished. need to start playing a lot more Call of Duty. Yeah, and it's too. not Battle Royale mode like that everyone was excited no, about. No, no, no. It's five one. versus five. You know, you, you, you run through your regular COD maps, competitive maps. Mm. And um, yeah, but it's just open for the public. Whoever wants to join can join. It's pretty cool. But they never go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the pros. No, but there there are a lot of teams or orgs that join yeah. in their academy or not academy teams, but technically their B teams. Got it. Um, which usually ends up winning the entire tournament anyway. So it's really like a tournament for the B teams. Yeah, it's the B team tournament. Yeah. Which like Joe Schmo from the street can enter if he thinks mm -hmm. he wants to part with some of his money. Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> if you want to. All right, well, let's talk uh, Rainbow Six Pro League finals. They're locked in for Milan in mm -hmm. May. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, two teams from North America, or North America, I should say, two teams from Europe, two uh, from Asia Pacific, and two from Latin America. And one two that didn't make it is G2. Yes, so G2 is just one of those teams that is always really good on LAN. Yeah. But as soon as they play online, it's everything doesn't work out for them. It's it's super weird. It's usually the opposite. Yeah, teams fall apart when they're in person with the crowd watching. Exactly. But these guys are the opposite. The, they're the opposite. They don't like playing at home. 
Okay. They prefer playing with a crowd. <laughs> they like it when people are watching them. It's 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 super weird. Whatever um, works for you. So then, of the teams that will be represented here, mm -hmm. who should people be looking out for? Who are the hot teams to keep, uh, keep our eyes on? Um, I mean, on? there are a lot of good teams. Personally, me though, I am gonna be looking uh, for EG because our boy Canadian is on it, and right. he's literally my neighbor. Oh yeah. He, yeah, he lives like five minutes away from me. Oh. Uh, he's been on the show before, and then I was just like. Oh, uh, we could have just, uh, I Ubered it, him in and I was like, we could have just carpooled. You literally, right. you're, I can pretty much see his house from like my, my bedroom. It's like Lisa and I, we live in the same neighborhood. Exactly. We carpool often. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk uh, CSGO. Uh, of course, I Am Sydney is coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, mm -hmm. The group stages are starting uh, very soon. No Astralis, they are on break. They also skipped uh, the Star Series. Uh, now, this is a pretty ridiculous tournament. What goes on there down in Australia? Um, well, there's a lot of just things that happen. It's a very fun tournament. They do shoeies, which is where they drink uh, beer out of their own shoe. Right. Um, very. Who hasn't done a few shoeies <laughs> right? back like, in their day? Yeah, it's 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 super weird to pitch uh -huh. to someone, and it's super weird to agree to do it. Anyway, it's a thing that they do. Um, going back to Astralis, it's very interesting to see them miss this many tournaments. They've done this before. They do breaks, and then right. they show up, and then they just sweep all the tournaments for the rest of the year. Specifically, the majors, they win most of it. And it's just one of those things. It's like, is it better to take breaks? Or maybe I don't know. if your Astralis seems to be working for them. So without them there, mm -hmm. who are we looking at? Because Navi won't be there as either. Yeah. So Navi won uh, the last, the Star Series, yeah. um, and they were phenomenal there as well. But this time, since both those two teams are missing, we will have um, uh, Phase. Yeah. Which also popped off the last tournament unexpectedly. No one expected them to make it to the finals. And even there is a clip actually of, um, I think they were playing against Team Liquid uh -huh. where the Team Liquid um, manager told the players that they're playing against FaZe in the finals. They were kind of just like, what? We're, we're playing FaZe? Anyway, FaZe Clan, look out for them. Really? They might be able to take the entire thing. We don't know. We also have um, Team Liquid, obviously, or yeah. NA with Stewie 2K. Yeah. My boy, I love watching that guy. He is just, when he pops off, he's he's on. And it's just, there's something about his attitude. He's just like, he doesn't mm. care. It's just, he'll, the, 2v1, you know, like 1v4, it doesn't matter. It he's doesn't fine. phase him. He can do it. So look out for Team Liquid and um, the other team that I said phase. Well, it uh, wouldn't be uh, FPS Friday unless we touched on the Fortnite, <laughs> uh, this new Avengers Endgame tie-in. So mm -hmm. how does this all work? Because you can get uh, like Avengers items, Captain America's shield, Iron Man's gauntlets, uh, Thor's axe, and Hawkeye's bow. And mm -hmm. then the other team, the bad guy team, has access to Thanos? Yeah, so it's uh, an LTM, limited time mode. Okay. Uh, it's uh, team-based, 20 versus 20 with a limited amount of spawns. So the evil team, or the Thanos team, right. uh, their main goal is to, and they are Chitauris, by the way, okay. like the peop, the bad guys from the, um, first the very first Avengers, Avengers that right. attack New York. And so they have lasers, jetpacks, and I think like a grenade that can destroy uh, structures. Okay. And uh, their main goal is to collect all the Infinity Stones. So right. as soon as one of them gets the first Infinity Stone, that player turns into Thanos. So as the Avengers, you're trying to stop them from getting the Infinity Exactly. Stones. So the uh, hero team, they start off with maps. Uh, it's kind of like a legendary map that it's, it's within your loadout, and it tells you where the mythical weapons are, Got it. which includes the Avengers weapons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your goal is to just kill as many of the Chitauri as, as you can to get rid of their get rid of their respawns, but yeah. on the other side, the Jishari has to get all of the Infinity Stones, which by the way adds buffs to Thanos himself. Ooh. So each stone has a different thing. Isn't um, it just going to be a bunch of players trying to get to be Thanos first? Because Yeah, like so there's fun. very good incentives on in both, both sides, because right. it's equally cool, but I think it is cooler to be in the evil side, just because mm. you can be Thanos. Well, let's talk uh, more incentives because uh, are there any for these esports organizations to be signing Apex Legends players right now? Because there is no, there's no custom game mode mm -hmm. in Apex Legends. There's no official tournament. So why are we seeing this influx of so many of these teams announcing that they've signed Apex Legends players? Yeah, it's it's. I mean, in most of the BRs, this also happened. There was a very just like 
everybody signed their players in the beginning of the game, even though there was no custom lobbies. The pros were actually not fighting against each other. Apex right. is kind of doing the same thing. Um, it's all about just, honestly, the more you play, the better your stats will look, right? Because right. it's just like the, the better you get and the more games. And if you're averaging like 10 kills per game, your stats are going to look ridiculous. And there is no real way to even like follow your stats yet. So is this maybe just a little bit of these esports organizations that want to attach their names to like popular streamers because there's no like mm, prize pools? Yeah, maybe, but it works the opposite way too. So it's like some of sometimes it's um, the the orgs would just get random people that are really really good at the game and yeah. then like boost them up to if they actually have a personality. TSM Fortnite did this exactly where they signed you know like Daquan, um, Hamlins, and they were just like. These guys are really not the best players in the world, but they are super entertaining and they're just super, they're very big personalities right. that they pretty much harness to get more fans into the TSM bandwagon, mm. right? So that's kind of what's happening in both ends. So it's like players that are popular getting um, sponsored by, by orgs and also like players that are not popular getting sponsored by orgs. But I'm... Assuming their con their contracts are probably going to be super short. Yeah, short term contracts. Yeah, because... and if not, like you can be terminated instantly. <laughs> Apex Legends just released this huge uh, news update, a, a big blog, and it did not contain the words tournament or esports. It was just about quality of life updates and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, everyone, that is all the time that we have for you on the show tonight. But don't worry, we will be back next week with another five days of shows for you. Thank you to Mustache Dave again for calling in on Monday. Matt and Lisa will be talking League of Legends. And of course, there'll be FGC, Rocket League, and more FPS content for you all the days after that, including Overwatch on Tuesdays, the workshop announcement. Ron and I will have lots to talk about there. Follow us on our socials at Squad State. See you in the future. Go watch Endgame.